guys welcome back to my channel so I am going to be doing my monthly favorites today I just cannot believe that it is almost September it's so crazy and being a summer baby my birthday will be coming up which is in January it is summer and I'm so excited for the warmer weather to start heating up so with that being said I am going to be doing my last winter monthly favorites which is for the month of August so today I have a few things that I want to talk to you about and those things that I want to talk to you about are things that I'm like super excited to share with you because I've been really 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 loving the first thing that I wanted to start off with is my t-shirt now if you guys follow me on Instagram you guys would have seen me post about a Camilla and Mark's tank top that I lost I actually thought that it had blown off my clothesline in the wind and I'd lost it forever and some person was loving it in neighboring houses I just want to put a PSA out there that I have found it it is my Camilla tank back in the house I'm so excited it's back so I wanted to add this into my monthly favorites because this is one of my favorite tank tops I love to wear they are on the little bit more of the pricier side they're not a cheap singlet hence the reason why I was so devastated about it but it is just a really nice tank top it goes pretty much with literally anything and you can also dress it up and dress it down that's why I like it the cotton is just so comfortable and I don't know I just like the way that it fits on me so that was the first thing that I wanted to share with you guys and like I said if you follow me on Instagram you would have seen my devastating post of the loss of this singlet so I am happy to announce that it has now returned back to its mother the first thing that I wanted to start off with is my rosehip oil. I have been using rosehip oil for the longest time, but this particular one that I've used, I've noticed the biggest difference. I always apply this straight after my shower, after I've cleansed and toned my skin. I really like to put this on at nighttime just for a really nice, deep, rich, hydrating, repairing, moisturizing look is great for you know sometimes you have like marks on your skin and sometimes I have like some scarring from just pimples just miscoloring and also just uneven skin tones and dryness of the skin I really feel like this just really hydrates my skin and it just really starts to even out the coloring of it as well so if I do have a little bit of discoloration around this area which is usually the places that I break out purely from you know hormonal breakouts I love to use this this is the Sukin brand it is a certified organic rosehip oil It is preservative free and it also doesn't test on animals so I really like that um, it is a vegan 100% vegan product and yeah I just like to massage this into damp or dry skin and I usually use it twice daily depending on how dry my skin is but I really feel like it has made such a difference to the way that my skin looks and the way that my makeup applies the next day after I've worn it but yeah I really really love this if you have heard about rosehip oil and the benefits I highly recommend the second one I really do love this one so the next thing that I want to talk about is nail polishes I always get so many questions as to what nail polish I'm wearing because I have longer nails now I am a hairdresser so my nails do tend to go a little bit chatty looking after a couple of days purely from hair dye stains from washing out colors and things like that so I actually do get shellac on my fingernails and I get asked all the time what it is so the last time I went to the nail salon I asked the ladies what was the color that I used and what brand it was now now I actually also learned it does come in a nail polish version so it is the DND and I use 616 in Havana cream this is literally the color that you see me wearing all the time just in the shellac version this is the one that you can just take off with normal nail polish remover so I do tend to use this one on my toes or if I need to replace like reapply my nail polish if I'm feeling like it's gone like a bit of a yucky color this is what I put over the top. 
I think I only paid about $10 for it. I actually haven't really heard of the brand called D&D &D before, but yeah, this is the color that I use, again, called Havana Cream. I just feel like it is the perfect nude. Every single time I wear it, I'm like, yes. Like, I always think, no, next time I'm gonna get a different color, and then as soon as I've taken the old color off and this one is reapplied, ugh, I just love it. So this is my Ride or Die Nude Nail Polish. So if you are after a nude and your nail our salon does use D&D. It is Havana cream that I use and I highly recommend that. So the next thing that I want to talk to you about is in the makeup family and the first thing I want to speak to you about is the Maybelline Brow Precise Fiber Volumizer. Now this eyebrow mascara has fibers of hair in there so when you do brush out your brows after you've applied the pomade it evenly disperses some fibers and I really like that because I do actually like my eyebrows to be a little bit fluffier because I am losing a lot of brow growth and it's just as time's going on I'm noticing that my eyebrows just aren't growing like they used to so I really like this particular brow product purely for the reason is it is a really really strong hold and the color is perfect to my eyebrow shade and also it just adds a little bit of extra fibers in to your eyebrows so that they look a lot fuller and fluffier and I just feel like if I have this on my brows they do not go anywhere they don't budge especially when you brush the front part up I find sometimes my hair is just a little bit too coarse and it tends to flop after a couple of hours whenever I use this brow product it just stays in the position that I brush it in from that morning and does not move so I really am enjoying this brow product I have it in the shade deep brown and it is the Maybelline. Next thing that I want to talk to you about is blush. Now blush is something that I don't normally like to wear but I'm slowly starting to get into the whole blush you know vibe. Now I can't really get into the pinks and things like that. I'm starting off with the more bronzies, apricot-y sort of tones and I just wanted to mention this shade that I picked up. It is from NARS and it is the unlawful color. I feel like this is a really great color to go in with when you are not someone who typically likes to wear blush. It is very, very similar to a bronze sort of tone, but it definitely has the color of blush and it just gives that really nice flush of the cheeks. It's great to use for first timers that aren't really wanting something too in your face. Whereas for someone like me, I don't really wear blush. So when I'm doing like pinks, I feel like I look like a clown. Like I feel like it's just noticeable on my face. Whereas I want to begin to start to get into it. And I feel like with this color, you can just give like a really nice flush of the cheeks. It, it blends really nicely into your bronzer. And also this shade has a little bit of a shimmer in it. So it just gives you that little bit of multi-dimensional sort of look. NARS blushes are just delicious. The last thing that I wanted to mention in my favorites for makeup is my Morphe palette. This is the 35R palette and it is a mixture of shimmers and mattes. I find like I tend to go gravitating towards this eyeshadow palette because it just has the nicest warm shades of any palette and there is just literally so many to choose from. So if I'm going and staying at a friend's house or if I'm away for the weekend or if I just want to use one palette for the, my eyeshadow look this is seemingly to be the one that I tend to gravitate towards because I feel like you just have so much options like there's just so many matte shades to choose from and also there is three rows of shimmer shades which normally they'll only throw in a few but this one is like just a mixture of just so many in there they're so affordable Morphe is such an affordable brand and the product quality is just honestly it's it's fantastic especially if you're an artist and you're going and doing eye makeup looks and weddings and things like that they're just such a great size and they're like so thin so you literally could have two or three of them in your kit and they don't take up a lot of room but you just have so many options for colors I just wanted to share that with you because I really love this palette and if you are looking at picking one up 
I would highly recommend the 35R, especially if you like warm tones. Okay, so next thing I wanted to talk to you guys about, I know how I always like share with you what movies and shows that I've been into, but I'm going to start off with something a little bit different. Now, I am so into true crime. It's ridiculous. Like, I love learning about it. I love reading about it. I love listening to it. I love watching documentaries on it. And I actually have a second job that I go to, which is about 40 minutes from my house. I'm in the car for quite a longer sort of period of time. And sometimes I just get over listening to the radio. And I just recently discovered podcasts, which I have found on my iPhone and I'm probably on the late train with it and everyone's probably looking at me thinking hello why haven't you been onto this I was flipping through and I randomly found this podcast channel one of the ladies who is actually on the podcast channel is a local radio presenter I think what she's called her name is Michelle Laurie and I'm pretty sure she was on Nanny no 104.1 I'm not sure she was on one of them anyway and she actually has a podcast that she does with another lady. Um, her name is Emily Webb and it is Australian True Crime. I just want to show you what the label looks like, if you can kind of see. I don't really know if it's actually too hard for you guys to see, but yeah, I am actually subscribed to the Australian True Crime podcast. Oh my god, it is so addictive, it's crazy. For, for as much as I know, there's probably about 15 podcasts on there and they usually go for about 40 minutes, which is perfect for me because like that's for as long as I'm in the car. I'm listening to these stories and I'm seriously like to the point where I don't want to get out of the car because I need to know what happens. It is mostly based on Australian crime and Australian crime stories. So if you are in other countries, you probably aren't so aware of these stories. But either way, if you are interested in true crime, you don't necessarily need to know who these specific people are because they do tend to go into talking about them and all of that sort of stuff. So with that being said, I I've actually listened to quite a few, which is, I'm going to rattle off a couple that I watch. I watch Australian Oldest Outlaw, um, Women's Prisons Australia, which a lady spoke on there. She was a previous prison inmate who then went on to help write Wentworth, the series that's on TV. So there's a little bit of like people that are on here that you're like, oh, wow, well, like I know about that or whatever. And it's just really interesting, like there was the murders of Alison Baden Clay and Maria Corp and just different stories like that. With that being said, Michelle Laurie and Emily Webb do interview different types of people that come onto the show, like they could be old detectives from those cases. So you're actually like listening to stories from people who were there firsthand, who, there who witnessed it, you know, who did do the case. So it's an even more interesting story, again, without it being necessarily about an author that's researched it, if that kind of makes sense. So I've been so obsessed with that. Like I cannot even get enough of it. Anyway, I told like my fiance, John, about it, who is interested in, you know, true crime as well. And this is coming from a guy. He is also obsessed with it. So I've now gotten him into watching it. He also drives to Sydney for work. So he's in the car for like a little over an hour every single day. So it's good for him to just relax and listen to those stories and, you know, just drive up to work and it's quite interesting it's just really really interesting also then become so obsessed with certain cases that i might not necessarily had known about so i've been reading a lot of books and not so much watching tv because i go through stages where i'll be like obsessed with watching true crime and needing to know everything about certain stories like for example the oj simpson case i'm pretty sure i mentioned that in one of my past favorites videos so i become totally obsessed and i need to read everything about it and i need to know everything about it so I become like addicted to it. I don't know whether I get this from my mum but she's like pretty into true crime as well so I did mention to her the other week that I've been listening to these podcasts and I told her about that certain one so she's been into it as well but she also mentioned to me because I was talking to her about Alison Baden Clay and I was also talking to her about Maria Corp which I didn't really know a whole lot about and she's like Lee I have the books 
So I was like, what the heck? So mum has given me the Alison Baden Clay book, which is about murder and also the murder of the Maria Corp case. And this is the woman in the boot. You don't actually have to know a whole lot about the case because um, I think her name's Narelle Fraser. She does talk about the case a lot. She was one of the detectives on the case. And yeah, so I am now getting into reading these books and I'm so obsessed. And that just means that I don't really have time to be watching TV series. If anyone out there is interested in true crime also, please let me know down below what your books that you have read and what you find interesting and what documentaries you've watched because I'm, I'm really interested in it and I like to be able to talk about it and I like people who are also interested in it. So if you can recommend anything to me, I would be really grateful of that because I will definitely look into watching it. I will see you all in my next video. See you. Bye.